Today, there are approximately 70 million people that are receiving Social Security benefits. And about half of those, that means 35 million of those people are actually having to pay taxes on that Social Security income, which is really unfair because Social Security is already a tax, so we had to pay taxes uh, to be able to be eligible for those benefits, and now we have to pay taxes on those distributions. So there are some in Congress today that are trying to eliminate the taxes that we have to pay on our Social Security income. In fact, uh, the bill was introduced originally back in 2003 uh, when Congress realized this is something that was really not fair. And now it's been reintroduced in 2012 and every year since. And so there really is a movement now among congressmen to eliminate this tax. So I want to begin by explaining exactly how our current system works. Uh, for those millions and millions of people who have to pay Social Security taxes, how is that determined? So once we understand how the taxes are calculated, then we're going to look at the details of this bill, what they're proposing, and we'll see the benefits if this bill were to pass, how that's going to impact millions of people. And then at the end, as an added bonus, I'm going to explain to, to those of you who have to pay taxes is what's the best way to go about doing that. Now, for almost 50 years, anyone that was receiving Social Security income uh, did not have to report that income and certainly had to pay no taxes on that income. Uh, but uh, beginning in 1985, legislation was passed, which then beginning in the year 1986, from that point forward, now almost uh, 40 years, uh, people have had to pay um, uh, income taxes uh, on their Social Security income, at least a portion of that. Right. And so that's what we're discussing here. Uh, how do they arrive at this number for us to determine uh, what we're going to have to pay uh, for income taxes? So, again, I pulled up the most recent return. Uh, today is August the 28th of uh, 2023. Uh, the official 2023 tax forms are not available just yet. So this is uh, for 2022. I suspect 2023 uh, will be very similar. So we're looking at the IRS form 1040. And so the specific line that uh, we're looking at that's going to determine uh, how how much uh, taxes we're going to have to pay on our Social Security is actually this line right here. This line is 6A, and it says Social Security benefits. And so what happens, uh, and then around January or so, everyone's going to receive a 1099 from the government saying this is how much your Social Security uh, benefits were in, in you know, the gross amount. And that gross amount is actually written here on line 6A. So someone, let's say they had $30,000 in Social Security benefits, uh, 1099 reporting, that's where they would write that. But the issue is not how much did they make, but how much of that is taxable. And this is what line 6B is all about, taxable amount, all right? And so there will be a portion, possibly a portion of this amount that's going to be then taxable. Uh, and so there's a formula, and I'm going to share with you what that is, called provisional income. And so again, prior to uh, 1986, huh, this would have been zero. And that's exactly what we'd like. We'd like to see people having to pay no taxes on their uh, Social Security benefits. But right now, uh, there are people that it's not a zero. Uh, there is actually an amount that they're going to have to pay taxes on. And so if this legislation uh, passes, then everyone that's receiving Social Security would be able to put a zero in line 6B. OK, so let's talk about the present system, because some people don't have a zero today. They actually have to put a certain dollar amount in there. And that number is determined based upon a formula we call the provisional provisional income. So let me explain how provisional income works. All right. And so provisional income is a formula um, and it's abbreviated uh, PI, provisional income. And anyone who does taxes, uh, certainly any accountant or a tax preparer would understand this. But the provisional income is this. It is, first of all, all your gross income. So this is everything that you would have to report as income for your tax purposes, plus any kind of tax exempt interest, tax exempt interest. Now, this is typically people who invest in municipal bonds. Uh, they don't have to pay any federal taxes, but they still have to report that on their federal return. So we take gross income plus tax exempt interest. And by the way, when you look on the on the 1040, that's line 2A plus 50 percent of your Social Security. So as I talk about gross income, this does not include Social Security. It's all the other source of income beyond that. So when it comes to Social Security, we're going to take 50% of whatever our Social Security benefit is. So if I make 30000 a year, uh, then this in this formula, that's going to read 15000 Gross income plus line 2A plus uh, 15000 If you're in 20000 it's going to be 10000 We take all those numbers together, and this number is then going to equal our provisional income. 
income. And so we take the provisional income and we apply it to a formula. And these formulas are thresholds uh, based upon how you file your income taxes, okay? And so here's what we have. So we have thresholds for single filers, uh, and we also have uh, thresholds for married filers who file a joint return. Okay, and so we take our provisional income, and so what we have is right here twenty-five thousand um, dollars in provisional income or less. Uh, then we would pay zero uh, taxes on our Social Security income. So we take the PI and for twenty-five thousand or less. We pay zero. But if I am going to be at um, uh, 34,000, uh, between 25 and 34,000, then 50% of my Social Security uh, income is going to be uh, taxable. So again, if I'm making 20,000, that means that $10,000 would be on that line 6B. Okay, if I am going to be above 34,000 as a single filer, then 85% of my Social Security benefits is going to be taxable. So again, if I'm receiving 20,000, 85% of that uh, then would be, have to be reported on that line 6B. Now there's different numbers for married, and so the married numbers are this. A married uh, person that is at uh, 32,000 or less, again, provisional income number, uh, then 0% of their Social Security is going to be taxable. Uh, if they're up to $44,000 or less, then again, 50% would be taxable. And if they're going to be above that, then 85% of their Social Security income is going to be reported on line 6B, therefore subject uh, to income taxes. All right, so here's my whole point, is that we have to determine our provisional income uh, amount, and then we take that amount, and then we apply it to these thresholds. And depending on where we're going to be, we'll determine how much of our Social Security income then will be subject to uh, federal income taxes. Now, as a note, uh, there are actually a few states, actually eight of them right now, that actually uh, uh, charge you state income taxes on your um, uh, on that Social Security income. Uh, most of them uh, do not follow these guidelines. And again, in this video, I'm not going to go through all the details. What most of them do is they have higher limits than this. In fact, the majority of them are going to be if you're a single person and you're you know seventy-five thousand dollars or less, then you're not going to pay any uh, state income taxes. If it's a married couple, it's typically around 100000 And again, there's only eight states that even make you pay any income taxes, state income taxes on your Social Security income. The majority of them do not. There's even some now that are phasing those out. But those of you who live in a state where they're going to charge um, uh, uh, you uh, taxes uh, you know, on your Social Security income, it typically are going to be at higher thresholds uh, than what these are. I think there's only two states that actually follow the federal guidelines, but all the rest of them are going to have higher or uh, zero whatsoever. Okay, so again, when we think about this legislation, what is the goal? Uh, the goal is to make sure that we don't even have to deal with this provisional income whatsoever because that amount is what's going to determine how much of our Social Security will be taxable. All right, now what I want to do next is I want to look specifically at this legislation and uh, to see what kind of impact it could have if indeed it is passed. Hey, just real quickly, if you're finding this video to be helpful, you can like, comment, and subscribe. And if you do so, that'll let YouTube know that this is helpful information and they'll send it out to others who also need to learn about Medicare. Mm -hmm. Now, next one we'll do is actually get into the details of this legislation, really the, the impact of it, and really how it could help millions and millions of people if indeed it is passed. Now, what's interesting to me is actually the history of this legislation actually began uh, back with Ron Paul, who was a congressman from um, Texas back in 2003. He tried to eliminate uh, taxes on Social Security benefits, uh, but uh, was not successful. Uh, but then others, uh, this particular congressman here from Florida, uh, Webster, as well as Congressman Massey from Kentucky, uh, have been really spearheading this uh, since 2012. So every year they begin to reintroduce this, this legislation in hopes that it will pass uh, to eliminate uh, this double taxation. And so what I want to do is just uh, read a couple comments from this press release uh, that was out just recently. Uh, and uh, you'll notice here at, at the very bottom, uh, this legislation is actually called the Senior Citizens Tax Elimination Act. And what will it do if passed? Well, it will amend the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 to terminate the inclusion of Tier 1 railroad retirement benefits and Social Security benefits in an individual's gross income. Remember what we talked about, this would be putting 
indicating a zero on line 6B uh, so that no one has to report any of their uh, Social Security income uh, as taxable. Okay, so that's what they're talking about. So that line 6B uh, then would be zero. It says, as this legislation takes effect, seniors will notice their tax liability is significantly reduced and will no longer deal with the double tax on their federally earned benefits. Again, we pay uh, taxes uh, into the Social Security system, and now we have to pay taxes as we take those distributions. So that's what uh, this act uh, would eliminate. And as you can see here on this article, there's 25 uh, different congressmen uh, that have co-sponsored this bill. So it definitely has some momentum and we hope that continues on. Now, let's go back to the top of the article and uh, we see uh, this um, uh, particular congressman, his statements. He says, for decades, seniors have paid into Social Security with their tax dollars. Now, when many seniors are on fixed income and struggling financially, they're being double taxed because of income taxes on their Social Security benefits. He, he says, uh, uh, Senator, uh, Congressman Webster says, this is wrong, and I'm pleased to once again uh, co-introduce this legislation to repeal this tax. The Congressional Research Service uh, reports before 1984, Social Security benefits were exempt from federal income taxes. Congress then enacted legislation to tax a portion of those benefits. And that's what I was trying to share with you on the board, a portion of those benefits. Now, if someone's a single filer and they're below $25,000 in uh, their provisional income, it's zero. Uh, married couple, uh, below uh, 32,000, again, zero. So the portion was what we're explaining in that formula. For some people, 50% of their social security is taxable. For some people, 85%. So that's what they mean by this portion of these benefits. And with the share gradually increasing as a person's income rose above a specified income threshold. And that's the whole idea of those thresholds that I explained to you uh, just on the board. Just one more statement. Congressman Massey says, although seniors have already paid tax on their social security contributions via the payroll, tax, which is what right now 6.20% uh, uh, the employee pays and then the employer has to match that. And that's what he's talking about, the payroll tax. If you're self-employed, you have to pay the full amount, 12.40%. They're still required to list these benefits as taxable income on their tax returns. Again, that's that line 6B, said our, uh, Congressman Massey. This is simply a way for Congress to obtain more revenue for the, for the federal government at the expense of seniors who have already paid into Social Security. My bill, this um, uh, bill, would exempt Social Security retirement benefits from taxation and boost the retirement income of millions of older Americans, all right? And then I love this comment from AMAC uh, president. He says, every year, millions of seniors become eligible for either Social Security or these tier one rural retirement uh, benefits. After working for decades, paying taxes on their hard-earned income to fund these federal programs, some seniors are forced to pay income tax on benefits they receive from the federal government. Taxing benefits, which are created from already taxed funds, again, this is the whole double taxation ideas, is nonsensical and curtails retirement benefits seniors have been promised. Seniors deserve the, to reap the full benefits of their hard work from career long contribution to Social Security and the railroad retirement plan. All right, and so you can see why it is that uh, uh, those of us who are concerned about this situation, why we wanna see it eliminated because it truly is a double taxation. It is totally uh, really unjustified uh, for for Congress to uh, be generating this revenue from those receiving Social Security. So what I would encourage you to do is reach out to your Congress uh, person, reach out to your senator and let them know that you would like to see this particular bill, this Senior Citizens Tax Elimination Act, passed uh, because uh, it really we need to return back to the days before uh, this legislation was enacted uh, to eliminate this particular double taxation. But until that happens, uh, you may be uh, above those income thresholds. And so uh, we want to make sure that uh, you're, you know there's a couple different ways in which you can pay these taxes. And so one way is you can pay quarterly estimated taxes or you can just uh, you know take care of this at the end of the tax year. But there's another way that people also like to do that, and that's actually called uh, IRS form W4V. Uh, this gives you, it's called a voluntary withholding. And so let me quickly explain that form uh, so that you can make sure that if this is the way you'd like to pay for those taxes, instead of getting some large um, you know, tax bill at the end of the year, this is a great way to do it. Hey, if you're finding this video helpful, I want to invite you to go right up here and actually click on a link that will uh, allow you to watch what I call the Medicare Essentials Workshop. It's a workshop that I did that really is going to show you everything you need to know about Medicare uh, from A to Z, uh, how to enroll, when to enroll, and uh, the plan options for you. So, so go to that link and check it out. All right, so here is the uh, W-4V form, a voluntary uh, withholding request. 
uh, uh, your name, of course, your social security number, your address, uh, that information. And this is the line really that we're focused on here is line six. And it says here, I want federal income tax withheld from my social security benefits. Right. So if indeed you would rather not have a large tax bill or have to pay quarterly estimates, then you actually can pick the percentage that you would like to have, either 7, 10, 12 or 22 percent. And of course, you know what kind of a marginal rate you're going to be comfortable with and uh, you know what you're accustomed to. So whatever would be the appropriate uh, one for you to check. And then, of course, you're going to sign it and you're going to date it. Now, with this form, what you're going to do is you're actually going to send this to uh, a local Social Security office and you actually can Google that uh, and uh, find the office that would be nearest to you and then you'll say, actually send this in and then they would start withholding um, uh, that portion from your um, a Social Security check because Social Security benefits are received, uh, you know, a gross amount. Uh, and again, if you're disciplined, you want to pay quarterly or, or, or annually, that's fine. But if this be something that'd be more convenient, then I encourage you to use uh, the W4V form. All right. So listen, I hope this is helpful. Uh, all of us um, uh, don't want to pay taxes if it's not necessary. Uh, but until Congress uh, passes this legislation, uh, you're going to have to continue to pay uh, this double taxation. And again, we don't think it's right. We don't think it's fair. And so let's all of us reach out to uh, uh, our Congress um, uh, and the Congresswoman and uh, let them know, hey, we would like to see uh, this particular legislation passed and eliminate the double taxation. Thanks so much for watching.